So welcome everyone to the sixth um, policy webinar. Our speaker today is um, Elena Simeon from the Executive Agency for Higher Education, Research, Development and Innovation Funding in Romania. Uh, our agenda is today that uh, yeah, we welcome everyone and we listen then to a presentation which an overall is targeting the challenges and opportunities for the mission-oriented implementation of climate adaption and sustainable cities. And we want to discuss with you then afterwards the opportunities and chances uh, in the participation, especially for the Western Balkans uh, in the projects that Elena will be sharing with us and presenting with us to us. Um, I also would like to uh, draw again your attention that with past webinars, this is already webinar six. And as for with this webinar, we will also upload the presentations and the video recording. And you will find on our platform also the presentations and the recordings of the last five webinars. We invite you to, to browse to, to the webinars we had also already implemented. Um, there's different links how you can get involved. You can follow the Western Balkan Info Hub. Um, you can get to see our newsletter, the website where you find many information about uh, the activities of the projects. Uh, we have quite more activities than the webinars. And we have also a, a B2Match platform where we want to give you the opportunity to get directly in touch with stakeholders from the different countries. Um, so today our speaker is Elena Simeon and Elena is an international project um, expert. Um, she has, she's an expert especially on policy recommendations, on innovation funding instruments and she has especially a lot of experience with Horizon Europe projects, interregional projects, ERANET projects and um, um, yeah, we hope that from this experience um, today we can we can learn about the, the opportunities of such European initiatives. So I will stop sharing my slide and I would um, give the floor to Elena um, sharing your your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Let me see if we are successful with the sharing. Yes. So it works. Good. All right. Thank you again. I think it's a great opportunity to uh, showcase a project that is dealing with the missions in the Danube area. It's really uh, not uh, for a long time in implementation. So you will hear a lot about the plans and the potential um, activities that you may join or any uh, interest that you may get in the activities can be still answered during the project implementation. So Harmon Missions is, uh, and I hope it's uh, clear on the screen, um, is a consortium of uh, 11 partners, as you can see, is led by CBTI from Slovakia, and it passes across a few countries, as you can see, Bulgaria, Ukraine, Romania, it's us, um, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Bosnia, Montenegro, and we have a city, uh, a municipality, that's the city of Košice. As a project, when we started, we didn't really understand if we have to write about the whole five European missions, or we should approach one, two, how many should we deal with? But then, um, after a dialogue with the Joint Secretariat, we understood that it's better to focus our attention on two missions, and especially on the adaptation to climate change, and my favorite, of course, 100 climate neutral and smart cities by 2030. I'm saying my favorite, and I, I assume you'll understand at the, at the end of the presentation why it is my favorite. Um, as the, these missions are closely working together to tackle uh, climate change challenges, 
we thought it's good to focus on these two in this area because we're not that advanced in working with the cities towards climate neutrality in the Danube region. And we all understand that, you know, challenges of the climate change go definitely beyond any borders we may have. Um, how we plan to do that uh, through the project, it's policy oriented, right? So at the end of the project, we should be able to provide both some policy recommendations for a strategy in the Danube region, but also some best practices examples and some possibility to exchange on the experiences from different countries on tackling the climate change um, with the two EU missions. Um, so, first objective is to innovate in the governance model for, for these two missions in the countries involved uh, in our project. Then we try to um, increase, encourage, facilitate the transnational cooperation between the consortium partners, but, but going beyond that too, uh, for the two, the two missions, the ones for the cities and the one for climate adaptation. And clearly, clearly we aim to enhance the interactions between the actors that are involved, but all governance level um, levels in uh, the different countries in the two EU missions. Mm, I'm not going to get too much into technical details. However, as a project, you know, we need to have some specific actions and one of them is to respond somehow to this uh, challenge of the governance model to establish a steering committee and advisory groups for, for the two missions we are working with. In this sense, what we try to do is bring different expertise available in the participating countries to advise the project consortium on how to deal with um, the international cooperation, how to um, exchange and also to increase the database of the best practices we try to discover in the participating countries. Um, most of all, and sorry, the most important um, action is the fact that we try to increase the cooperation at national level from in all these in all these uh, countries. Because what we try to do when we talk about governance is to reach to to the collaboration between different levels of the governance in different countries so that with our advisory groups we hope that we can reach to an enhanced um, cooperation for the two EU missions climate adaptation and mission cities but at the same time like really really enhance the cooperation between national and also interregional um, actors that are committed to work towards uh, supporting the, the two missions. Um, as I said, the most um, important part for the policy level would be this common strategy to, to coordinate the involvement um, of the Danube region for these two um, missions. And I, I keep repeating them, climate adaptation and mission cities. Um, we also, as we said, we try to um, enhance the transnational cooperation, but this cannot be done only by meetings and events. So, in this sense, we, uh, in the project in Harmo Missions, we are trying to build three platforms, online platforms, that uh, will function on the one website. So, if you looked for us and you didn't find much information, it's because this is work in progress and we still have Two years to to work on uh, the delivery delivery of these uh, three uh, platforms. Um, we try to find um, the best way to provide to the partners in the Danube region and yeah in the, the entire region the possibility to easily find partners for potential projects um, and this should be also uh, an area where you find um, successful projects already. As um, 
a meaning of sharing information. As I mentioned, we try to bring in best practices in our country. So, for an example, if we have Kosice now as a already part of the cohort of the European mission cities of the 112 mission cities at, at European level, Kosice will be will have a lot to share from their um, climate city contract uh, preparation and implementation. So they can have an example of a best practice. I don't know, dealing with mobility, greening um, the city, um, retrofitting. So this can go to different areas that have to deal with um, tackling the, the climate change. Um, what we uh, also want to do, and I'm sure is very helpful. I'm from Romania. I know how hard it is to get to to excellency uh, compared to, to the Western European countries. Um, we will have a um, platform where you can find different calls uh, that uh, are relevant for these climate uh, adaptation and mission cities missions so that you will find open calls, um, specific information related to the applications and everything that is useful for you to work um, for a better life in our cities and in our regions. Um, this is also a space where people should be able to match make, let's say, some sort of a brokerage platform where you can specifically look for, for partners um, that are suitable to your interest or current activities. Um, what we also try to do, and this is very specific to the um, cities mission, to the, the 100 uh, uh, cities mission, um, it's um, to build a platform. You've heard maybe about the climate city contract. This is uh, the official engagement, commitment, actions and investments that the European Commission is asking for from the 12th, uh, sorry, 112 cities already part of the European mission. So this is some sort of a contract where each city uh, displays the political engagement, the actions they plan in the associated investments. We, with our platform in Harmon Missions, we try to focus on the Danube region, so the countries in this area, uh, collecting um, information that is relevant from the countries, but also providing some templates that could be of use to you. And the, in this, and I think Koshitsa is one example that can provide uh, some templates, for an example, for for the partners in um, in the region. Um, I think when we talk about region interaction for climate oriented EU missions, as we call them, the two missions I keep mentioning, um, we, we will have forums and events and different workshops and a best practice brochure like everyone does. It, this is not very new, but I think the topic in our region really needs to be covered and advanced quite a lot. So that's something. I, at least from my experience, uh, see is, is missing here. And I think with the project, we can make it happen, especially since we are focusing on countries that don't have advanced support structures at national level for, for these missions. And the most important, of course, after we look um, and collect and make these interactions happen, we will be able to get out with the um, recommendations to to have a more efficient governance model for the EU institutions, but uh, um, most importantly for us um, in the country and in the region so that we understand what the power of the cooperation can bring in our uh, region. Um, I like to get you on a broader level. So Harmon Missions is definitely dealing with the countries I mentioned, with the partners there, uh, the 11 ones uh, involved, but uh, it is a Danube region-oriented project. However, Capacities is the European Commission's network that connects 
uh, national platforms that work for the mission cities in 15 European countries currently, and it has the ambition to extend to the entire Europe. So when I say, <clears throat> sorry, when I say capacities, I say it's a Horizon Europe CSA, but we are more than 60 partners involved and we, the, the support organizations there, we are a huge consortium of around 100 people supporting um, the national structures that aim to put together in place measures to support the cities at national level. So this is a CSA that um, deals specifically with the mission cities. So the climate adaptation is not part of this one. But of course, there are different connections at national level in the 15 countries. You can um, imagine this. Um, we, um, in Romania, we are leading this um, consortium together with uh, the strategic support of uh, the research promotion agency in Austria. We have on board the Viable Cities team from Sweden, and I'm not sure if you know them, but they are the, the parents of the Climate City contract that's now everywhere on everyone's um, um, conversations. Uh, we have Vicle Europe dealing with capacity building activities and the Ministry of uh, Universities and an agency of energy in Italy, together with a bit of support of the Climate Kick. So we are a huge consortium that has already committed to set up support structures at national level. So as I told you earlier, if we talk about governance models, when we try to encourage collaborations between different um, actors at national or regional level, here, 15 countries have already committed to make it happen for the mission cities. Um, and I think I would like to let you know that us in, in capacities, we are very connected to the Net Zero Cities platform, which is the official Mission Cities platform. So they are the ones working with the cities, the, the 112 selected. Um, and we in capacities take information from them and try to answer to it at national level. So when I say national level, I, it, it, I mean ministries, different funding agencies, different organizations that are able to influence policy and funding to put in place support measures for, for these cities that are in, in our countries. And then what we do more than, than um, um, providing um, support through our national structures, we connect very much to the Driving Urban Transitions Partnership Network, where we have 28, I think, already funders that together for, I think we already closed the second call, um, put money together, national money from these countries participating in, in the call to find joint, uh, to fund joint, fund and find uh, joint uh, projects that have to deal with uh, research and innovation solutions for cities. So this, this falls very nice into the picture because we do the national support we do the policy work, but we also have our funding instrument here in, in the Driving Urban Transitions Partnership. And here we have also a strong connection to international cooperation. So, for an example, we can work with Canada or um, South Korea or um, America, let's say. Um, I think when I talk about capacities and the um, national hubs or support structures for the mission cities. I'm very proud to mention our success or success case that we just started. Um, so in Romania, we have already created M100, which is Mirror Mission Cities Hub Romania. And it is one of the front runners at uh, the level of the Europe, uh, European landscape for the city's mission now. We, um, uh, I'm sorry, we are, um, formed through a lot of uh, official commitments, so to say. So we have a, a memorandum of understanding between uh, six ministries under the coordination of the Ministry of Investments and European Projects. Um, at the level of the 
uh, representation, uh, we are talking uh, about the state secretary. So there is a coordination committee formed of representatives of these six ministries that guide the activity of, of this hub. So guiding means providing also um, awareness, let's say, uh, but most importantly, we count on the resources they can mobilize to support the cities. Uh, what we did in our model, governance model, because we were talking about governance um, earlier, we uh, also included as permanent representatives and in the, uh, att attendees, members, let's say, uh, of, of the hub and of the meetings of the hub, the three selected cities uh, in the EU mission from Romania. So we have Krishnapoka, which is the star, you know, um, well, if you don't know, it's one of the first cities that already uh, received the EU mission label. That means their climate city contract is very well implementable and achievable according to their plans. We have Bucharest District 2. Um, this is one district from our capital. And Suchava, which is a smaller municipality with very different challenges. Um, and uh, our agency with a complicated acronym, <laughs> so the Research Innovation Funding Agency in Romania, we act as the facilitator, so we are the ones that provide the secretariat for this hub. So, as you can see, this is our structure in terms of uh, uh, governance the, of the hub. However, we, um, as a hub, uh, we already, uh, and this information is available on our website in English, you can all, always find there how the process uh, is going and how we, we form this hub. So, in, in the hub, together with the uh, funds uh, from uh, and partners, together with partners from Norway and Iceland, uh, with money from the Bilateral Cooperation Fund, we formed the consortia, let's say, to big projects. Um, so we are currently running 3 million projects. One is supporting the national hub where we build uh, the platform. But besides that, we also launched a call for 10 additional cities. With these 10 additional cities, what we plan to do is to actually uh, bring them um, in the cohort of this mirror mission cities hub to support them to put together their climate action plans and this way to make sure we are all aligned in priorities and templates and formats so that uh, we can use uh, funds to support them the funds that should be made available by by the ministries that are part of uh, our the coordination committee currently at the national level we are running different uh, caravans, information, um, in campaigns, uh, conferences, so that we mobilize our cities. So we really get into the cities and watch their best practices, discover what's happening here and there. Um, at the same time, of course, promoting this call. So we want them on, on board because we have a, a great international jury, which is fantastically recognized at European level through their expertise in, in this uh, climate change um, work, let's say. So we should, the call will close in September and we should have the results uh, by the end of October in a public forum. Uh, we hope to be able to announce the, the 10 uh, cities that will join our cohort. So that's a concrete example of how to deal with the multi-level governance and the actions in a national support structure for the city's mission. Um, um, for the city's mission. We do not work for the climate adaptation mission, but we plan to connect very much to that, both at our level uh, at the national level, I mean, in the country, but also at um, the, the European level with the projects, uh, with the capacities network, I mean. Um, I think before saying thank you, um, what we want to to send as a message, both as Harmon Missions uh, and uh, as the European project network capacities or as the Romanian hub is that um if you if you have a space where to freely 
exchange your experience and learn from others, that that builds the way to to a success. It's not easy. Um, I can tell even the story behind our hub. It's not easy to do that. It takes uh, a lot of dialogue, a lot of time, a lot of commitment, but it may happen because I forgot to mention in 3 million in our hub, we also facilitated a partnership between the Romanian cities, the uh, Reykjavik, which is the only city from Iceland involved in the EU mission, and the three from Norway, Oslo, Trondheim, and uh, Stavanger. So we we facilitated also the partnership between the city halls, but not only the city halls, also their local ecosystems, which could be companies, which could be universities or different civic uh, societies. So I think that's all. And before ending, I think you can, if you are interested in joining the Harmon Missions activities, uh, come back to us because there is a possibility to still follow and contribute to the project, participating in, in uh, different activities, uh, not only conferences, but also workshops, but maybe also contributing with best practices. Um, just send the message because the coordinators from CBTI in, in Slovakia, they can sign a memorandum of understanding with anyone interested to, to join the project's activities. And I think the more we are, the more we can uh, make the change happen in, in our region. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elena. Perfect timing also. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have now around 30 minutes. Um, for for questions that uh, or also just the uh, open discussion um we're quite a small group so you can either raise your hand write it in the chat or or pose it, put your question directly um maybe just i can start i was just wondering because you said um um to join that you had to just contact someone wow well, how how is the Maybe you can give us a little bit more insights of the the process of of joining because I think it's then very often the practical the practical questions the practical barriers who who's able to decide to join maybe you can give us a little bit more more ideas In, how how, yeah. how to get started so if if anyone is interested that's um, connecting can write to me directly and I can connect you to the coordination, the coordination team. Um, the coordination team has a memorandum. It's, it's a template, the mem memorandum of understanding between two organizations. So it will be the, the project coordinator and the potential uh, organization that is joining the, the group. So what, what, how should I call it? This, this would be some sort of a working group. We are all used to that. And in this working group, that means there is a small community where you will be invited to events. You will follow um, the, the, the workshops that are happening in the project. You can contribute with best practices. That's in short, uh, that offers that, that Harmon Missions can uh, provide to, to someone interested. You know that, I mean, this is usually a first step into joining other projects into linking different um, um, organizations, but at the same time, building new partnerships for uh, new potential projects. So in principle, it wasn't planned to get to, to uh, enlarge, but somehow it became a bit more ambitious with uh, the focus that we have now on the climate change, because I'm, I'm sure you will feel what's outside right now. So we need to take action and we need to advance uh, a lot the principles and the collaboration on the missions, or, or at least on these two, and on my favorite, as I said, on the city's mission in, um, in the Danube region here or in everywhere. We all need that. So I hope I'm clear. I, I uh, don't, don't get, uh, um, I mean, I don't want to from over promise. So it's, little but it can be a lot if, if i may hello elena uh, elke here um i have a kind of follow-up uh question so now we understand a little bit better 
how to link with Harmon missions and the capacities project. But how would you see that on a bigger picture to so these two projects are ways to share and get involved. But if we would want to get involved with the contribution to the mission as such, not to the project, but to what what does it mean to be in to be engaged and to contribute and to um provide work that we are doing or that some researcher based in, I don't know, Novi Sad is doing, uh, which is maybe not yet the mission city, but they have some climate uh, relevant results. What does it mean on a bigger scale to contribute to the mission and how can one kind of map these results that there are all over and say, okay, I have results that are relevant for the mission and they might be relevant for, I don't know, someone in Reykjavik, as you said, but uh, yeah, if you could explain it like one level up from those projects. In, in the European landscape, um, the way we see things is like if you're a city, you will get to the Net Zero Cities um, platform to find templates, to find connections, to see what are the cities that are already on this way doing. So it's it's a different way. So if you want to see what you can do, you can look there, what the cities needs, and maybe you can contact the city directly and talk to them and offer your services. If you are um, regional authority or someone who wants to help the cities in a more policy like or you have some funding to provide then you would come to capacities because we are the ones connecting the national um, authorities or regional authorities that work for the for the city's mission at least so that's that's how it is. That's that's how you can engage, and you can ask us. Okay, I don't want to be a partner, but what can I do? What is what do what did you do? What model worked? I can be, for an example, a country as Norway um, um, was some time ago when they were exploring uh, with the capacities partnership um, and consortium partners. What's the best model that is already working in some countries? Or, and, and what would be the best for them, considering their specific uh, national context? So it's we have already a collection of um, learning portfolios, so to say, in capacities where you can look and see different cases. So if you're a city, you go to Net Zero Cities to discover some information. If you're a regional authority, you come to us. That's to come. And if you, I'm a researcher. If you are a researcher, you should be able to support everyone. <laughs> and but how in theory... do I do that? How, how, where is my entry point? As uh, Because often these research activities are rather specific. I don't know, it's about heat islands or whatever. So how, how do I get my research about a social innovation on uh, climate change or heat islands in cities? How, how do I get my research to the people and I think contribute in, to the mission? I think in that case, it's more, um, yeah, your dialogue with uh, the cities. I mean, in you could, I guess, try to look to, to net zero cities and find the city, but we do not, not us, not in this, this at least not in capacity, we do not take up research results and share them. Mm. So it's, yeah, yeah it's, that's uh, why I'm asking you to answer on a bigger scale in terms yeah. of like the mission governance overall. And you, I, I mean, yeah. it's net zero cities, the platform that is recommended. I okay. I think they are the ones that collect everything. I mean, mm -hmm. even, Thank even you. A, a picture about uh, us because they act as the mission cities platform. So they have to cover everything. Um, and I don't know for, for this Harman missions, for an example, because if you're a researcher from the, the 
Western Balkans, then I think we we may be more suitable for you because what we do here is before besides sorry bringing together two missions that are connected thematically we also focus on the region so it's like you have the european level now you have this regional level and then in each country the national or regional level depending on the on the structure but i think i think this is a unique opportunity for for the western balkans country let's say to to have a specific voice with their national specific um, situations. Thank you, Elena, for the really detailed explanation. Are there any more questions from the group? Anka raised her hand, I think. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I'm Branka Zizic. I work as a EAT community officer uh, in Montenegro. Uh, I don't know very much about uh, about the missions. Actually, I used to follow it uh, some time ago. So, and then after some time, I had a gap in in following uh, the missions. Uh, so, uh, I would like to ask you, Elena, if you know something about uh, Podgorica. How how is Podgorica doing in this? Uh, uh, city's mission, and what would be your uh, suggestions for Podgorica to be better in, in, in this initiative? And uh, the other question would be, uh, what type of projects are you expecting uh, at this call, which you are planning now? So, if you can maybe give us some more like tangible feeling about uh, different types of projects that uh, are being, uh, or sub projects that are being uh, uh, carried out uh, within these uh, city calls. Well, for Podgorica, I um, I don't know directly uh, the information because uh, this is um, the work that is done by the Net Zero Cities City Advisors. So the mission is organized in a very complex support um, structure. Let's say, so they work with the cities, net zero cities, they work with the cities and they have the city advisors that could provide information about um, how uh, the projects, uh, the projects how the cities are doing. However, as far as I know, um, I think the cities that have submitted the climate city contracts are now under under evaluation. So I don't. I don't think we can know who will get um, the label. Like when I say when they get the label, it's like their uh, climate city contract is ready to go. You know, it's good to implement. So I I um, I cannot provide that information because I'm working with the authorities, not not with the with the cities. Um, in terms of the projects. Um, I'm not sure if you know, but uh, from the mission cities and now there will be more for the climate adaptation. Uh, there is a work program uh, for Horizon Europe where the calls should be available. And these calls are mainly directed to, um, to the cities. And it could be um, for the cities that are selected already in the mission. So this is mission cities. Mm -hmm. Or the 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 ones that are dealing with um, the climate adaptation, which are broader and more accessible, I would say, for for um, the newcomers. But I cannot give you. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm working with uh, uh, projects. I'm not uh, working with uh, funding opportunities. I do work with funding opportunities in driving urban transitions partnership. That's a that's a different. Um, uh, that's a different thing, but to be part of that or to be able to access funding from there, uh, Montenegro, for an example, should have a funder participating in, in the in the call. So that that's a more complicated funding mechanism. So the most accessible are those that are de dedicated from the European Commission, and these are usually available online in, on the on the. Um, um, European Commission's uh, website. However, 
we will hopefully provide soon with the Harmon Missions platform at least some opportunities for the Western, uh, well, the Danube region actually. I hope I answered. I mean, I know it, it, it's not a clear answer, but that's uh, uh, what but I can the, answer. But what about projects that you are expecting in Romania? What, what kind of projects? Ah. You are going to uh, what 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 do they deal with? Do they engage how and so on? For our projects, you mean? I, I thought I, I, it was for the these two in Romania. We <clears throat> um, so the plan is like this: once we have the ten cities, we help them build together um, with advice and technical assistance from from our team. We will help them uh, create their own climate city contracts. And we will start providing funds in um, waves, so to say. So, for for an example, uh, the first call uh, will aim at transport, energy efficiency, and um, um, production of renewable energy. So that's that's something very concrete. That we are expecting from these uh, uh, cities that we are selecting. Does this answer your question? Yes. Yes. I, I, okay. I wanted to maybe to know a little bit more. Like either the, the, these are research projects, community engagement projects. Like for what type of of, of, of projects do you expect on this on this uh, calls to these calls? Um, well, at least for us in Romania, uh, these will be more, uh, the, the next ones will be more, not necessarily infrastructure, but I think that's the term, so more hardware oriented, let's say. Whereas um, currently uh, for these cities I talked to you about earlier, so for uh, Cluj-Napoca, Suchava, Bucharest District 2, that are partner, partnering with uh, the cities in Norway and Iceland, we have different projects. One of them is dealing uh, with youth engagement, for an example. Uh, another one is dealing with tools for monitoring the emissions. Um, another example, um, I think it's um, concerning, yeah, it's urban labs, so where all actors in a city come let's say, um, um, modalities to, to work. So they're, they're very diverse because the activity um, of the hub, you know, when we talk about the city, is not only the city. It's the entire um, stakeholder community that they have. And we talk business here, we talk citizens, we talk civic um, initiative groups. So a lot of, of actors and research. For us, research is really very, very important. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions? Other hands up? Let's see. Um, I can maybe ask one more question if there's no from the group. I was just because in the DOT or so we were, or in the city in general, we realized that it's very hard to convince cities to participate because they're, they're usually very busy. It's not really their work to, to find projects. These are usually other stakeholders around, like more the researchers. How how do you see this? How what's the best way? How to convince like a community or a city, maybe to get in to take the effort, the time to dedicate a person to to get engaged in in such initiatives? Yeah, and that's a very good question and a very real one. That's true. Um, it's hard for the cities to start working on projects dealing with administrative matters. However, what we are talking about here, it's about building capacity, right, in the cities. What we would like to end up with is different teams with different uh, cross-sectoral um, uh, skills, let's say, 
that are able to work on, on different projects and have as their main uh, object of activity, so to say, to to deal with with projects that um, support the city in uh, in their climate uh, climate fight, or who knows how we will call it in the next years. So capacity building and team team building transition teams has some, how sometimes we we call them a team that that's able to to support itself and that's somehow self sustainable. Let's say so that it doesn't face troubles when the city hall, the mayor is changing, you know, political change is a very important factor, especially when we talk um, governance. Does this answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a very good point. To, yeah, that the city maybe dedicates a, a own department for such such initiative. That this is maybe important to start. <laughs> um, are there any more questions from from the audience? Um, I not, guess it's um, hard to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think maybe a, a comment from my side. I know it's very hard mm -hmm. to um, understand the, the the entire mission picture when you're not close to it. But once you get close to it, um, it, it gets you in. So <laughs> you you understand and you 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 understand the flexibility and the fact that it's good to align different actors towards or to the same vision. Um, if one maybe the most important factor that I felt as coming from Romania is the power of the network. The power of the European network that um, can come to your country and support you in a, a dialogue with a specific ministry or with with a specific funding agency or whatever funding organism you have in in uh, the country. So when you have in mind that I would like to support the missions, what do I do? Maybe uh, Branka to to answer your question, maybe. You should also look for uh, if there is anyone as a national contact point dealing with um, these missions. If there is any sort of support that's available for you to understand if you can get access to funding, that's that's also one thing. But if you really want to do something like influence the governance model or really build some support structure for for the city or for um your city um you you need to start with a a dialogue and start with some people that already worked on that who are willing to come and talk to you uh, or talk to you facilitate this exchange with with your authorities or yeah give, give some support that's the idea that's for an example capacities this this is its main value that it is a network of mm -hmm. countries that have a lot to share, but there is a network where from you can take some some information useful for you at home, and you can have their backup to act at national level. Let's say. Yeah, thank you, Elena, for summarizing it one more again. Yeah, I think it's 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 very hard to understand the missions from outside if you're not in. I think this was a very good comment. Um, and yeah, I hope that this helps, that this helped now a little bit, um, getting more ideas of the advantages. Um, if there are no more questions and comments, then, then I would close this webinar. Um, I would like to thank everyone for participating. Uh, yeah, I would encourage you to get in contact with Elena, um, maybe for further information. And um, we actually continue the webinar series for the Policy Answer Project uh, in October. So we will have a break over the summer. So we will provide over the platform the slides from Elena and also the video. And we will then also circulate information about follow-up webinars. Um, so I would wish everyone a very nice summer break. 
Thank you, Elena, for supporting us. And uh, I hope that we see each other again in October. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Have a nice afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.